Hey guys, at CES. There's supposed to be some e-bike stuff here, but just having fun exploring the interesting electronic stuff and thought I'd do a short video about it. And I'm here with Chris from Propel and hey check out some Panasonic e-bikes maybe and Bosch stuff. It's like people can engrave their names on these little tiles and they're all disorganized. And this little guy picks them up and puts them in that template. It's just incredibly fast and precise. Oh, that was like a tr Oh, we beat it! Hey Jim, will you just tell us what's going on out there with the... What is it, Morpheus? Yeah, so Morpheus is an example of our technology uh, as Omron. We are in AI, robotics, and automation. So Morpheus is trying to uh, share how robots can work in harmony with, with people. Huh. Well, it's interesting because so it's, it's like really good, but I have seen it have a couple like misses, you know, or... Well, it's not, it's not perfect at this point, but it's it's working towards trying to tutor people how to play ping pong better. So it's trying to adjust to the skill of the player. So it's like learning as we play here? Exactly. Whoa. Exactly. So you can see how it's it's adjusting or rating your play. Huh. The upper left. Oh, yeah. So this guy's advanced, huh? It's adjusting. Wow. What are some other applications of like AI robotics that you're working on? Well, we have a lot of the uh, pick and place uh, machines over here for packaging. Beverage, that was like crazy, that one. It was like super fast and very detailed, I would say, right? Yeah, yeah. So many different applications for our product. Are there any other human interfacing ones, like companion robots or like pets or, you know, there's the Ibo from Sony that's kind of cool. Uh, a long time ago, we had a cat that was uh, uh, one Did of it our get first away? worries. <laughs> no, no, no. Ran out of lives. Do we do have the mobile robots running around here. I don't know if you've seen no, those. No, can you try to find one with us? Uh, there's one here. It's not. Oh, that's that. that. Yeah. So there's a lot of different applications for that. It can be used uh, to transport things in a, in a factory automation or a factory environment. Or uh, we have one that moves uh, is an application to move food behind the scenes in an airport. For wow! Example. So wow! Many different applications there. This is so cool. Is well, if they do take over and kill us, at least it'll be very, very fast and efficient. <laughs> It's, it's like a flying drone for a person. Technology. Okay, so what is this thing behind you? We see, uh, we're walking by and it looks like a human blender, but uh, is it real? Like what's? Uh, well, I, I mean, it's a personal flying machine, not a human blender. I right, can right. You Thank that. goodness. So right. The idea and the concept is is all built on the idea of uh, increasing multi rotor range. Okay. And payload. So are you looking for test pilots? That's my question. The, the, the position may be open. We'll, we'll yes. find out. Well, I, I hope it doesn't open too quickly that's it and is this i mean is it real has anyone flown this thing or what's so the it has flown but we have not flown it with a person on it I and see. Uh, we have partnered with uh, uh deseret uas that is a uh, testing cool well it'd be neat to see something like this someday it's a pretty cool area they got the little like vacuum bots but check this thing out it's like a window cleaning bot and i, I don't know i think it uses like a vacuum or something to stick and it just crawls its way. It's only on one side of the window. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it uses like air to suck itself close to the window. <laughs> wow, that moves a lot of water. Oh, it sure does, right? I wonder if this shark is like a thing or if it's just like a yeah, no, toy. It it's, got cameras and it's got cameras on its eyes. And it looks like it could swim. But it be, you know, huh. how it that's that's creepy. Can you imagine like going surfing with your friends and you got that remote control shark? And what are you looking at under there too? People out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Little guppy. Hey, little guy. So Chris and I were arguing about these things over here, like this, this can't be real, look at this. And then we've got a gentleman here, Steve, from what's the company? that Hover just, Surf. Hover Surf. Hover Surf. It's, I would love to surf on one of these things. And they are real. They are real. These are real bikes that are currently owned by the Dubai Police Department. Wow. And a couple of other uh, 
fire rescue agencies around the world are looking are uh, prototyping them. So right now. you told me a bunch of stuff before uh -huh. that's like okay, 400 pound max cargo weight. If it's the fire and rescue, maybe it's you plus a passenger. But I, it almost doesn't look like a passenger. What do they actually use it for? Right. So basically, if it were a, a rescue situation, getting somebody out of a flood zone or whatever. Uh, you could actually put this in drone mode. Can you walk me over there, like if I'm holding your hand or whatever? Sweet, we're going, we'll get a close up. I can duck this if need be. Look at this thing. So, uh, carbon fiber? Yeah, carbon fiber, uh, 200 pounds of thrust per engine. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, six engines here. Um, um, you're looking at about 80 miles an hour top speed. Whoa! Yeah. Uh, Altitude is unlimited, <clears throat> excuse me, it's limited by the pilot's fear factor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could be, I can imagine, it's like playing a video game or right. something. It just doesn't look, like this looks totally prototypey, right? This is, so this is prototype because we don't have the electronics inside it yet. The guts are missing. This one is, this one is real. Let's go over to this one, okay. I gotta see this thing. So, this is basically, you take that thing, you wire it up, and this is locked in, wow. but this is this is just that with electronics in it, and, and a whole lot less safe. And, and a whole lot less safe. So <laughs> wow. what we what we did is we we replaced the propellers with EDF's electric ducted fans. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You think it add weight, but then you've got the carbon fiber. You got the carbon fiber, so it adds a little weight, but it's overcome by the extra thrust. So this version right here is capable of producing. Uh, about 700 pounds of thrust. Wow. Uh, roughly 20 to 25 minutes of flight, depending on weight. Okay. Um, altitude, we limit it through our LIDAR system to 16 feet, simply because that's high enough to get over traffic and get to an emergency. So that's the idea, is just to get there quickly? Right. The idea is just to get over traffic, get somewhere quickly. Uh, in the other example I was giving you for fire and rescue, we could put in drone mode, drop a couple rope ladders, and carry two people Whoa, to safety if they were what? stranded. What? That is awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of use cases that we're exploring. Yeah. The Dubai police are looking at this, for example, just for traffic monitoring. So huh. go up, spot possible accidents or road blockages where they need to get. Can we walk around sure. a minute? Yeah, you got free. some fans. There's like the headlights and stuff going on. Right. Wow. And these look like. Just a gearless carbon fiber props, right? So, whoa, yeah. Is and he gonna start it up? Sure it no, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, we gotta back up. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Look so, at this. Uh, so the drone, so it's joystick drone controlled. So the uh, the best pilots on these are we found. Uh, motocross guys and drone pilots. Those are the two types of testers. You're looking pilots. for volunteers? Cause yeah. <laughs> you drone pilot? So, a little bit, yeah, uh, yeah. So I had a hard time with this and I'm a former fighter pilot. Oh my goodness. And I had a really tough time with this, so. It's crazy to me because you see the drone like demos and it's like you can't crash it, right? You know, so something like this where you you have that full control, but that also means you have control and yeah, you can crash. Control. Right, yeah. exactly. Huh. So if we operate in drone mode, so we want this it's a dual purpose. Um, some of our customers are looking at drones, just like Amazon will look at it to haul to and fro. Right, right. Right, yeah. so that's one that's one use case. Someone empties a can of bear spray, you need to get people out of there right, quickly. Right, exactly. Yeah. In other use cases, you want to have a pilot on board where he can control and go where he's needed to sure. get to the scene of some type of event. How much are these? So this is $150,000. Can the public buy them? Like if I have a ranch and I'm like, hey, here's 150. <laughs> You can, unfortunately, um, we're not releasing them for public use because of liability and safety. Uh, but yes, this is- The government shut down, we yeah. could do this. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Yeah. And uh, this is considered an ultralight vehicle under FAA regulations. Yeah. So it's legal for me to sell to you right now. Wow. For 150,000. Yeah. So if you want to get your wallet- and But how I operate cash. it might not be illegal, right? Right. That's the key. Right, yeah. and that's why we decided to limit it to uh, first responders, law enforcement. So cool. And I think we want to keep it that way for the foreseeable future. We want to keep it in the hands of safe professionals. Yeah, that's a good idea. Protect your reputation. Right. Yeah. And and also protect the public. So we don't want it in the wrong person's hands. You have been so helpful. And I, you know, there's a bunch of people excited to talk that's to you and fun. stuff. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so cool, you guys. We got got to cross the ropes and get a close up. 
this thing is, this is a real thing. It's flown in Dubai. I can't believe it. What do you think, Chris? It's definitely pretty wild. <laughs> I mean, you know, didn't expect it, but yeah, this it's is cool, crazy. Man. On our way over to the Yamaha stuff. Chris, what do you think of the show so far? Yeah, it's been pretty cool, you know. Got to check out a lot of AI and stuff. And yes. Robotics, pretty interesting. Smart cameras were cool. So like the security cameras would kind yeah, of recognize Yeah, facial faces. recognition, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Got some interesting things ahead of us. There's some cool stuff. You're welcome. Enjoy the show. You did a great job, thank Bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> we found these cool phones from Huawei partnership and they've, they've got the full screen it's neat to see that like the the screen going edge to edge but what's really cool is they have these different modes so this is like regular mode and then that's a picture of Chris beautiful look at his soft smooth skin uh, and then they also have a slimming mode so that's normal and then look at that look at those hipster legs this is so he looks so cute <laughs> I'm totally uh, gotta get this maybe I'll, I'll do better in my dating profiles Chris is going deep sea diving Right. Oh my breath. <laughs> What's it look like, buddy? Cool. Yeah, there's fish all over the place. He's seeing something like this. It's, a little, uh... it's got this 360 degree camera, and that's what they, they took the video with, this little thing. So those two lenses. <laughs> Sweet, dude. Cool. Thank you. And so you're from Electric Bike Review? Yeah. Cool. Cool to have something like this as your skylight in your house. Maybe with like cameras pointing to the real outside clouds and then projecting them into your room. Low energy, flexible panels. It's pretty cool. What do you think, Chris? Really wild. It's, yeah. it's an impressive it's, demo. It's, it's really immersive, you know? Like, the sounds and stuff. detail what's going that on. That guy right there? But yeah, but th this is just to, uh, to estimate your age, huh. uh, heart rate. Can I, can I try it? Gender, yeah, oh, yeah. Here, Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah you want to hold it for you? It's gonna estimate my age and stuff. All right, let's see. The mystery is gonna be solved here. <laughs> Whoa, I'm getting old, guys. <laughs> I think he's really a cyborg. I don't know. Look, guys, I eat healthy, I ride bikes, and thinks I'm 28. I think it's the plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, but... it's plastic surgery. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. Can I put in a request for a robot dog from Bosch? Because I really like one. What would? A robot dog. Do we have the robot A puppy? Dog? Yeah, I want a robot dog someday. Because I travel so much, like Anna. I I'm busy. You need a friend, I need right? a friend, yeah. I'll check out if like Chris. Yes, put in a good word for me. <laughs> She's like, I'm just an actor. I don't know. She, I, might she, be. she, might she, not be she seemed legit. She seems pretty legit. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan. I heard you got a new job. I didn't oh realize they gosh, sat yeah. you on the I'm bike. I'm a model now. So. <laughs> Looking good, buddy. What are we riding Maybe here today? a little today? bit better than marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just pulled in. You cruise around the show, saving your legs. I've been, yeah, I've been uh, delivering uh, pizzas, beer, and uh, just, just parking. Parking now to fuel up. It's very cool, good. very cool. It looks like the new Urban Arrow, you guys. An updated the new version. Urban Arrow, the Shorty. What is it called? The Shorty? The Shorty? Shorty? Yeah. We should know this. We're yeah, the experts. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you guys, you guys know better than me. And this is the Shorty upgraded with Kobe. Oh, is that one of the big like updates for 2019 or what's the deal? Well, Kobe was introduced to the world. Um, years ago, yeah. but um, compatible with the Bosch system. It was really introduced last year at Eurobike. That's right. We're here at CES to show this off and show the potential, um, what it can bring to your bike or e-bike. Really, it works for both, but we're really showing it on e-bikes. And let's see. I've seen it before. You got like the lights and there's a wireless backlight and there's the apps and stuff. Exactly. And now you guys have the Kiox, which also might have some apps. We talked about that at Interbike. So the Kobe is maybe it's more open open source if it's using your phone. That's the beauty of Kobe. Cool. Kobe is open source. There's an SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit. Yeah, so you're an IT guy. You know. Oh all about yeah. That. Okay, so software developer kit. Once you sign up to be a developer, a Kobe developer, and I just signed up uh, a few days ago, 
I have access to um, developing apps cool. for Kobe. The great thing is, I can use the sense, the data from the sensors on the phone, sensors in the bike, other <laughs> sensors that I wear, sensors that I connect, like, I don't know, cameras or other lights. And with all that data from the sensors, I can write whatever apps that I think might make my e-bike experience better. I love the whole internet of things concept going on. And I've, I've seen like accelerometer, brake lights, and turn signals. Like There's all yes. kinds of possibilities. Yes. So when you bring it all together. Smart detection. You guys are gonna use my likeness? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with electric bikes, but you gotta eat, and they are really good. That's the Impossible Burger. Look at the line, people are loving it. Did you guys have one? Did you have an Impossible Burger? Yes, they're so good. It was good? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Have you tried it yet? I did, yes, I loved it. And Chris did too, what did you think? Yeah, really good. <laughs> They are good. Do you, is there like stores all around the country or where do you get them? Yeah, they are in restaurants across the U.S., a little bit in Hong Kong, and we just announced we're going to be releasing, um, am I supposed to be there? Releasing uh, <laughs> retail. Cut, cut. No, it's all good. <laughs> Recent, so people can buy these at like Safeway or whatever? Eventually, yeah. Sweet. Which yeah. stores? Have any um, signed up we yet? We haven't said anything yet. It's so. a secret? Yeah, it's a secret. Well, they are really good. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's like course. sustainable course, and what else? Good protein so, yeah. and... No animal cruelty and better for the planet. He likes them. They're really good. Can I look at it close up? Yes, look, I bit it. Whoa. See? I actually ate it. <laughs> it's good. And, awesome. I, and I'm cheating because this is the second one I've had today. Hey. That's how good they are, so I came back to get another one. I like your nickname. You are a curious fellow. I am very curious. That's why I'm eating this burger. That's rad. Buy this stuff. It's actually really good. <laughs> Thank you very much. How's that information? That was great. That was, that was pretty good, right? It's really off good. the cuff. <laughs> Cheat on beef. Cheat on beef. We're checking out the Innovation Award Showcase. This is all the stuff that got some, some extra positive recognition. And we've got this H2 Tech hydrogen powered electric bike. That's interesting. I, I thought way back when I was starting Electric Bike Review, like what happens if we go to hydrogen? But the thing is, it's still using a Broza drive system, right? So that's what's in there. So hydrogen is converted to electric. Uh, and I think that's really neat. They've got a new Vinci. I lifted this up just a second ago and it, it seemed like at least 65 pounds, maybe even 70. And I'm not sure how much hydrogen weighs, if this is full or not, uh, but it's kind of neat. It's like cool to see this thing. It's not turning on or anything. Maybe we'll see hydrogen powered electric bikes in the future. Be cool. So what's going on here? How does this work? So this bad boy right here is the first of its, uh, of its kind a robotic punching bag for boxers of all levels, whether you're a professional or a, just a beginner, yeah. like uh, some people behind me. Uh, it can adapt to you, it can see you because it has computer vision, it's very smart wow. uh, with its adaptive technology and spatial understanding, so it predicts your moves, it teaches you how to move better, how to balance yourself, and and actually how to build up stamina and patience which is very important just yeah, she not for that. sports level she's been going for a while i mean that's pretty impressive yeah because once you start you can't stop it's, <laughs> it's that addictive you got to give it a shot do they have it in gyms or do you buy it for your home or what uh you can do both uh, but we're <laughs> aiming to spread it all over the world uh, that so that every neighborhood gym has it so yeah. today you go to la and well, you know uh, have training with bot boxer then you go to cape town and there's another bot boxer you log in under your username it keep track of all your stats of all your success rate and you just pick up where you left off so cool and this is a beginner level right here yeah this is a pretty much beginner level and all the dials right there little circles you can always adjust them and work on uh, depending on what you want to work on you want to work on your speed on your drills on your power on your balance or any other aspects you want to work on fantastic thank you Huh. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> so you guys have seen the Lumos helmet where it has the lights built in. It looks like this company has a light that attaches to any helmet that yeah. gives you turn signals and stuff. Can you point it out and kind of explain how it works? Yeah, of course. So basically we created a connected brake light that can fix that can be fixed in every kind of helmet. Huh. This helmet is one of 
one of uh, our helmets. We are planning to uh, to create like our own uh, range of uh, connected helmets. So the brackets built right in. The brackets will be directly here. Oh, it's so removable too. Yeah. Is this rechargeable? Yeah. For you micro six USB. Hours, six hours of autonomy for one hour of, uh, of charging. So how does it know to, to break or turn signal? Like, what's the control look like? Inside the product, you've got two kind of technologies. The first one is an accelerometer. Okay. That is what that is going to uh, to work when you are going to lose speed. Yeah. Right? And the other one is um, the gyroscope that is going to detect if you fall or if there is like a big accident. Oh, exactly. Uh, how about the turn signals? How do those work? So the turn signals, uh, I mean, it's like the big value, uh, added value of your product. Yeah. You are able to activate them through this little remote control. So you, you mount that to your handlebar? Yeah. Okay. Directly that you can fix. Can I see it real quick? Oh, okay, so you just mount that, and is this rechargeable too, or is there a little battery no, in it? It's like, it works like with a little battery inside that you can check. Oh, you know what? There's also these side things. What are those all about? This one is like for the skiing version. Oh, so, so it like exactly, <laughs> and it will be like an SOS button. So if you have any problem, or if you have in danger, you just have to press it. And with the remote control, it's going to be 79. Okay, not bad. Thanks again, man. Thanks a lot. We saw this plant box concept, and they've got a cute little. LED garden, maybe you've got some flowers, some nice colors and stuff up here. And then it's hydroponic too, so it kind of takes care of everything. You just have to put the nutrients in it and maybe you've even got a whole vegetable garden going. I thought this was really neat. Really cool stuff. Perhaps in the future you grow your own food. How, how much is the, the big one over here? How much is that? The big one is uh, 599. 5.99 US dollars? Yes, yes. Huh. For the end user price. Where do you get the seeds and stuff for the plants? You can buy it online. It's very popular. You guys sell it? Yeah, you can. We, we also provide the source of the seeds. Wow. And the nutrition. That's pretty cool. When you're ready to eat, you just snip, snip, and then does it keep growing, or how does that work? Uh, you can do it again. And uh, there's the substrate, and also have the basket and the fertilizer. You can do it yourself, it's very easy. Huh. And the whole time period around uh, one month, you can eat again and again. Huh. Yeah, very easy. How much is that, the box with the uh, plants? This box is uh, around uh, nine, U nine US dollars, nine point nine nine. How long does it take to go from that to that? Uh, to this extent, only 15 days around that. 15 days? Yeah, 15 days. How wow. Months. And probably use very little electricity because it's LEDs, right? Yes, LED. Very efficient. I, I like this too. There's a, they've got the little plants and then it, yeah. it gives you a nice... Okay, so we found the Razor booth and you know these guys have had kick scooters for quite a long time. A lot of them are unpowered, but now they have some of the electric scooters. And these yeah. look like the kind of the ride share ones that you can check out. It sounds like San Diego is a city, maybe San Antonio. Yeah, we have some of this other type in Long Beach and I know I guess they're starting to release this in some of the other cities, which is quite cool. The big wheels yeah. are a lot more comfortable and like the big deck, the seats, the new yeah. the pneumatic tires are interesting to me because on the one hand it's comfortable, but on the other it's like you could get a flat tire. Yeah, and that whole like maintenance economy that exists for our scooter share is interesting too. Where there's you know, you could just like apply online and you can kind of maintain the scooter. Really, is that how that charge works? Them and well, they're doing it with all the different scooters. Whether it's Bird or huh. you know, people take them home at night and charge them. What? Yeah, Whoa! Really so they're outsourcing like the maintenance. Oh yeah. yeah, I did not know that, Chris. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So the show's inside the Venetian, and they have this canal. It's really cool. You could take a little ride and. These facades, it really feels like you're in Europe. Even the sky painted onto the ceiling. An actor, kind of a statue thing. This is the food court, and it's it's gotta be one of the nicest food courts I've ever I've ever been to. Definitely cool. Haven't been to Venice, but very cool. Wow. I haven't been to Venice either. Yeah. Well, I guess even in Venice, California, there's kind of little canals. That's right. And then there's Naples and SoCal as well. It has kind of the canals and bridges. And We should do an e-bike trip and then uh, some kayaking maybe sometime that, that way. Just a neat place to check out if you're ever in Vegas. Recognize this thing. We got some Reese and Mueller. Is that the supercharger? That is a supercharger. Looking good, man. We got the Trek. This is the super commuter over here. 
Love that bike. They're doing some good stuff. And then I wanted to show you guys, they have like this whole area where they're demonstrating the sensors that Bosch has and, and all the different products that they're in. Check this out. So the Bosch, it, it's a sensor that they actually use in GoPro. We've got smartphone over here. I think iPhone actually uses Bosch sensors too. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the gimbals. You guys are on a gimbal right now. <laughs> Smart glasses, watches, smart underwear. <laughs> Do you measure up? Is that what, I mean, what's the measurement? What is it doing? This is smart stuff. Looks like, oh, Oculus, love that. VR headset, haptic gloves maybe. I love these things, a little vacuum cleaner. Handheld drills, of course. And then this is kind of cool. They've got this like smart cabinet, I guess, where you can you know get the weather and then decide like what kind of clothes am I gonna wear? Huh, I want a new look, and you just touch it and it cycles through the different colors. You can say I want to take that outfit, or maybe I want a different color up here. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's there's no buttons, it's like a projector up that way. I think that's awesome. We're sort of behind the scenes here. You guys are actually riding on a Bayou Tech gimbal right now. People have asked in the past, like how do you keep the video stable? And and that's this, it's this wand thing. So as you point, as you move, it stabilizes it. And that's basically how I make reviews so that people don't get sick when they're watching. And this one, you can like wear it. So you can put it on your chest or whatever and ride bikes like this. Or I've actually built a, a helmet mount so I can ride around and kind of right there, right in the action. I think these are really cool. You know, the GoPro 7, you can actually control it with their new gimbal. You can kind of aim it like this, but you can also play and pause and, and interact with it. And you can actually piggyback on the bigger battery right here by plugging directly into the gimbal, which is really neat. The new GoPro 7, I think it's the black, has like image stabilization that works pretty well. However, if you want to shoot at the really high resolutions, you can't use stabilization. So using a hardware solution like this is really the, be the best way to go. And you know, I, I just, I've enjoyed making these videos and stuff. And if you make family videos or maybe your own reviews, post them back in the forum. This has been one way that, it just makes it easier to watch. It's it's more comfortable, people aren't getting sick, it's smoother. So this was this is a solution that I really enjoy. And I guess I'm doing like a little shout out, but I saw these guys at CES and thought uh, it might be fun to, to kind of explain. So yeah, feel free to chime in with questions on this thing in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. How much are these, by the way? Like, is this like 250 bucks or something? Or uh, this one is 222. 222. Yes. Sweet. How about that one? Uh, this one, 100. We use a Sony. So like about 200. And then there's the on-off switch. Yes. I, my chest-mounted one, it's a little bit older and it doesn't fold as flat. See, they, the new one's kind of angled like that, so it can pack flat which is important, you know, I'm always wearing my backpack and cruising like this. So these are pretty portable and I really like that. It's, it's a good design, a lot of good updates. It's splash resistant, control the GoPro 7, packable. Good job, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that's a clever idea. Where are you heading on that thing? I'm going to Las Vegas. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll meet you there, look right. at that. I love the boots too, they thank look warm you. and cuddly. Oh, they are. <laughs> It's a pretty nice idea. Keep the blood flowing a little bit, you know? Get some exercise while you're at the desk. I need one of those, all the video processing and stuff. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Keep you engaged. Maybe you could charge your electric bike with that. So this is really cool. We were like watching this video and it looks like they have high occupancy vehicle detection. So, you know, that means carpooling. So do you actually have multiple people in your car? And it can right. sense, like they have scanners and it must be like, I don't know, body temperature or something, but basically you could get a ticket without any police or anything. It would just, it would detect like, are there actually more people in the in the car than one? That's, that's interesting. Timing lights based on traffic and different oh. things like that. You could do all sorts of different stuff. You have parking violation detection. So huh. if somebody's illegally parked, they just automatically send the uh, meter made out. And, and, yeah, and then they'll have like a robot like yeah. come out and like, Put a sticker on your. I can help with that. And we were talking about the, what, you know, what there's like a bike waiting for the light, and then it, sig it senses there's a bike, so you don't have to like try to get on the sidewalk where you might not be allowed, and then right. press the button, so it just senses that there's a bike in that lane. Yeah, it's a really big deal. I've had to deal with that sometimes, and it's just it's kind of frustrating. It's be much better. I mean, they have those sort of sensors for cars, right? You. Yeah. You ride over and they sense that the weight of the car is there, but as a cyclist, you don't have enough weight, generally speaking, huh. to actually set that sensor off. So, I mean, this is definitely a much more advanced solution using 
cameras and such. But. It's really cool. Big booth too. And then the other thing, you know, we're, we're right across from Goal Zero and these guys have the solar panels and battery packs. I've actually reviewed one of these in the past and I thought it was a pretty cool solution. I think it was this one right here. So you could fill this up and it's just a, it's a heavy, cheap lead acid battery in this one, but it keeps that unit uh, relatively affordable, 450 bucks. And you could plug into it. It's got this kind of the cigarette lighter adapter or the USB ports. And then if there's an emergency, you've got some backup power just run off of these solar panels. I think they have flexible ones too. Yeah, cool. and it actually comes up a lot because a lot of times people are like, oh, can I charge my electric bike by solar? Yeah. You can, but not directly. And you know, if you can charge one of these power packs and then draw upon that, at the moment, that's one of the ways that you can do it. I just wanted to shout out because Goal Zero has some cool, you know, little accessories, little power packs and stuff and all these a little fan that plugs in or a light so if you're camping you can hang that on your tent no, it's pretty cool oh there we go that's the fold one so you can you can kind of fold it down and then unfold it once you're at the camp okay guys this is really cool I've heard about atmospheric water generators in the past and you know if you have an air conditioning machine you see it drip and stuff when it's active well that's this technology now that combines solar with atmospheric water generator and we've got Caitlin here to talk about it. What's going on here? What's, what's the deal? So what you see behind me is a hydro panel. It's using sunlight and air to make drinking water. Huh. So what it does is it uses solar power to extract moisture from the air. We have a very special material that collects that moisture and we use the solar thermal that you see in the hydro panel yeah. to raise the dew point of inside the system in order to passively condense that water as pure water. We add magnesium and calcium and it delivers right to a drinking water tap in your home. It's wow. the best quality water that you can get and it frees you from having to rely on bottled or municipal water. Can we come, these are real units, right? Absolutely, like, real units, just like what you'll see out in the world. Okay, and I, I was peeking under here before and yeah. I saw like a, it seems like there's some stuff moving and you said there's a uh -huh. fan? Yep, so there's a fan, all sorts of mechanical components that are enabling that water creation at a very efficient level. How much are these? And how, I mean, is there a wait list or how do you get this? Uh -huh. Well, you can get it today. Uh, so it's $2,000 per panel. A standard, is this a panel, like this, this whole thing? Yep, this is a panel. It's pretty big. It's pretty big, but it you know, goes right on your roof like an appliance. And uh, uh, households typically now have two hydro panels. Installed, shipped, everything done. It's 5,500 to 6,500, but that's great because it's got a 15 year lifetime. So that's only 15 cents per liter compared to bottled water that's 50. Wow, and then, you know, there are a lot of places where they've been tapping into like the aquifer or whatever, or maybe yep. water's a limited mm -hmm. resource. We're in Nevada right now yeah. where water, you know, there's the, the reservoir and everything like that. But I'm just wondering, in a very dry climate, is that a problem or how, is it more efficient, less efficient? Like what happens? You know, we make more water with more humidity, but we've designed the system so that it works in even very low humidity conditions. Huh. We're in Scottsdale, relative humidity is often below 10% and we're still making lots of water. Wow, and then, and then temperature wise, if it's like below freezing, was that a problem? Yeah, or? so freezing is where it gets a little tricky. So of course water freezes. So when it does hit freezing, uh, the hydro panel goes into a hibernation mode. <laughs> as soon as it goes above that freezing point, it turns right back on and starts making water again. Do you have to buy pumps and stuff too to get water pressure or how, you know, how does this connect to your home? It's all integrated into the hydro panel. So this sits on your roof or on the ground and a pump inside the system that's powered by the solar delivers that water right to your tap. This is incredible. It just seems, and, and pure too. What do, what do you do in terms of like minerals or yeah. filtering and stuff? Yeah, so because the material's only attracted to water molecules, our water starts very pure like distilled. Yeah. There's a mineral cartridge inside the reservoir that's integrated in the hydro panel that adds magnesium and calcium, and it goes right to the tap. But of course, every time you store water, it's important to keep that water clean. Huh. And so our water starts perfect and we keep it that way through regular ozonation of the water. I lived in Bermuda for a summer and you know, they actually collect rainwater off of their roofs. They're all painted white and then there's like a storage tank below the houses. I thought that was really cool. This is even cleaner than that. Oh, and the fact cleaner. that it works without the rain and stuff. Is there a catch? I just feel like this is amazing and kind of affordable. Like there's there's actually like no catch, right? People ask that all the time. It sounds too good to be true. Yeah. It's not too good to be true. It's the future of water. How long have you guys been around? 
We've been around since 2014. We've had hydro panels installed around the world since 2016. Any projects you're particularly proud of? You know, I'm very excited about all the work that we're doing here in the U.S. You know, it's something we don't talk about enough. Our water is not perfect here. Our, our infrastructure fails all the time. We've got natural disasters like we saw all across 2018. Bottled water is not only poisoning our environment, it's slowly poisoning us all. And so I'm really excited to see the growth of hydro panels adopted in the U.S. Uh, and here at CES, we're also announcing some of the great work we're doing in Flint. Oh, Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was the lead thing going on there. Absolutely, so yeah. So people, they were like needing filters, but the, the infrastructure there needed a big overhaul, right? Absolutely, So yeah. this is sort of a, it's maybe people are skipping right to this and then you, you know? Yeah, it's a great solution all over the world. Don't worry about the infrastructure. Don't worry about the bottled water. Go straight to the source. Can you use like, what if you have an RV and you travel? Can you put one on top of that? Mm -hmm. Coming soon, if you're interested in that. For real? We, so we have a, a list, and as soon as we have that available, we'll let you know. I gotta get on that list. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Kaylin. Thank you so much. Source, is there a website? Like, where do you where do people get more info? So for more information, go to www.zeromasswater.com. And how heavy is one of these right now? It's about 300 pounds, so it's pretty heavy, but you know, it's a, it's a permanent supply of your drinking water. You want it to be robust. It's like two adult, you know, yeah. people on top of your roof. That's exactly, a, yeah, most roofs can, almost all roofs can hold it. Fantastic, thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thank Wait you. a minute, one more question. All is right. this hail proof? Cause like I'm oh, from Colorado yeah. and- Oh, you should have seen, we've done all sorts of testing on the glass. <laughs> we know exactly at what point it breaks. It's hail proof and it's also survived hurricanes and typhoons. Wow. Yeah. This is fantastic. Very interested in this. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, great job. Thank you so much. That was a fun interview. My best. I'm genuinely interested in this. Cool.